Ignition running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. It is 13 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News on WSB. You know what? L- let's not open the phone lines yet. Uh, let's give it a little bit because there's a lot to say. And I want to focus on some of the areas um, that aren't being talked about a ton. Um, we could talk all night about what happened in Parkland, Florida. And regurgitate all the news you've heard today. There are, however, side stories here that I really think um, we need to delve into. First and foremost, there is a number circulating. I've seen journalists I respect circulating this number of 18 school shootings this year. That number... These journalists may not realize it. In fact, I I have heard from one of them already who um, deleted his tweet. That number's a lie, and many of these journalists don't know it. The number comes from a group called Every Town for Gun Safety. It is the group backed by Mike Bloomberg. It is an anti-gun group. And they noted that this was the 18th school shooting in the U.S. in 2018, and the media ran with it. Uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, Jeff Greenfield, uh, Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, uh, Cher, um, uh, Al Brooks, the actor, news organizations retweeted it uh, and and cited it, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, Time, MSN, uh, BBC, New York Daily News, Huffington Post, Um, I heard it here last night when we were running the ABC News stuff. They cited this as well. Uh, 18, if you typed in 18 in Google, it was the top search, 18 school shootings in 2018. It's not true. It's not true. It was taken and reported as true by every major media outlet in America. Everytown USA is a left-wing anti-gun group funded by liberals who want gun control. And the media grabbed their data and ran with it in a way they would never do if it was a right-of-center organization. It is fascinating to watch members of the media who on a daily basis talk about the Russians passing off fake news to be embraced by conservatives, grabbing a hold of this information that is fake news and spreading it as if it is fact. They will not hold themselves as accountable as they like to hold the Trump administration and Trump supporters. Let me give you this information, and this uh, credit where it's due to the Washington Post, one of the few news organizations that did not run with the data. On the afternoon of January 3rd, a 31-year-old man who had parked outside a Michigan elementary school, called police to say he was armed and suicidal. Several hours later, he killed himself. The school had been closed for seven months. There were no teachers there. There were no students there. That is one of the 18 school shootings this year, according to Everytown. Also on the organization site is an incident from January 20th when at 1 o'clock in the morning a man was shot at a sorority event on the campus of Wake Forest University. A week later, at a basketball game was being held at a Michigan high school, someone fired several rounds from a gun in the parking lot. No one was injured. It was past 8 p.m. well after classes had ended for the day. But those were both school shootings listed by every town. Suicides were listed. In other cases, it was other random events where a bullet happened to land on a school campus. That was considered a school shooting, that a stray bullet fired from somewhere else landed on school grounds with no injuries, and they listed Stephen Gutowski at the Washington Free Beacon. Let, Let me read you what he wrote. This broad definition of school shootings places two separate suicides, a January 9th incident where a man shot a BB gun at a bus window resulting in no injuries, a January 10th incident where a student in a criminal justice club accidentally shot a peace officer's real gun at a target on a classroom wall instead of a training gun, which resulted in no injuries. There was a January 9th incident where gunshots were fired from somewhere outside of Cal State San Bernardino, which struck a building on campus without injuries. 
There was a murder of a Winston-Salem State University student at a nightclub near the Wake Forest campus. There was a shooting of a 15-year-old at a Dallas area high school. And then there was the event in Kentucky, which left two dead and 18 injured. They're lumping all of these shootings in. Again, one of the shootings in this 18 school shootings this year was of a man parked in front of an abandoned school building who committed suicide. There were no teachers. There were no students. There was no school. There was a school building. And that was included. Time and again, the media pushes these stories. There's no reason for anyone on the right to want to compromise on gun control when the media is willing to embrace lies as facts. And all they want to do is convince conservatives to move the left's way. You know, there are areas of common concern as well. And let's not excuse the politicians from behaving badly. Do you know there's a bipartisan consensus to get rid of the bump stock? The National Rifle Association supports uh, either regulatory or legislative efforts to get rid of the bump stock. They won't even let them be used at their firing ranges. But when members of Congress try to draft legislation solely to ban the bump stock, anti-gun lawmakers added provisions that would have banned every single handgun in the country. That hasn't been reported, has it? But it's true. So it's really hard to have a, a honest conversation on this issue when the battle lines are drawn and so many of the lines are premised on presuppositions that aren't even true. I mean, for God's sakes today, you've got uh, racial activists in this country claiming it's racism because the shooter wasn't shot by police, shot and killed by police. That if he had been a black kid, the police would have shot him automatically. Let's take it for granted. Never mind the circumstances of he had fled the school and peacefully surrendered when they tracked him down. Pay no attention to that. Let's just assume, hey, if he was black, he would have gotten shot by the police and killed. Everybody comes in with their presuppositions. But I do have to say that the media has behaved atrociously here. Because you expect left-wing activists to try to score political shots for gun control. You expect right-wing political activists to try to score political shots to keep it from happening. The media claims to be the neutral arbiters of fact, the people who just report the news, and they're not. They have joined the left, and largely they're joining the left to try to scare parents because the media supports gun control, and the media believes if parents get scared, they will force Congress to do something. And the way they've decided to scare the parents is to lie to the parents. And that's not right. I bet you're familiar with P90X. My producer, Charlie, I used to ridicule him for using P90X. I've got a lot of friends who have used P90X. And truth be told, I actually eventually decided everybody's doing this. I need to get myself back in shape. So I bought it. And then you know what I realized? I didn't have a DVD player in the house. I, so I never actually used it, as you can probably tell. Um, and I always thought it was kind of crazy. As, as so many services are moving digital, the parent company, Beachbody, uh, dot com. It had a digital presence, but it wasn't quite easy to use. But now it is. They've got a new product I want to tell you about. My wife's been using for yoga for a while on our Apple TV. In fact, they have an Apple TV app. They have an Android app. They have a, an iPhone app. Um, really, really easy to get all of the Beachbody products. Um, the P90X, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, the three week yoga retreat, all of them streaming on your TV or your phone. Uh, you can do these things on your own time. You can pick your trainer. Easy to navigate. Again, my wife has been using the yoga one for a while. Uh, really likes it. Uh, and I actually even downloaded it to the Apple TV since i got to start going back to the gym regularly. I may give it a try with you. Who knows? We can have some tag team effort. Right now, though, I want you to go try this. You can get a free trial membership when you text ERIC to 303030 30 30 30 text eric e r i c k to 30 30 30 you're going to get full access to the entire beach body on demand program for free all the workouts and nutrition information for free just text eric e r i c k to 30 30 30 today
It is 27 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. Okay, we can open up phone lines now. 404-872-0750. 1-800-WSB-TALK. One of the, the things that was reported this morning is that uh, the shooter... He was a member of a white supremacy group in Florida. Uh, Law enforcement is now saying that's not true. There's no evidence to tie him to this group, even though the group claimed him. Now, what I find interesting about this, first of all, is that a white supremacy group is willing to claim a mass shooter at a school. But second, most groups do. Most of these sorts of groups are willing to claim people who do these things. They're willing to say, yes, this is one of ours uh, because they want the notoriety. So this group was willing to do that. You you know one of the groups out there that's not ever willing to do that? ISIS. There have only been two documented cases where ISIS has claimed someone was one of theirs, uh, and the media, the the FBI hasn't been able to trace the people back to ISIS. In fact, there have been numerous people who claim to be of ISIS when ISIS says no. One of them happened over in Europe. The other one, the mass shooting in Las Vegas. ISIS says that was them. It's 40 after the hour. The phone number, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Let's go to the phones. Uh, Let's go to Tom. Tom and Marietta, welcome. Hey, Eric. I'll make this short. Um, Right-leaning, proud gun owner, and I, I don't think it would be a bad idea to just try to pass something requiring uh, somebody who wanted an AR-15 just to answer a few questions, get a psychiatric evaluation to make sure that uh, they were mentally stable enough to be able to own one. Uh, I'll get off the phone and let you uh, let you answer that because I think this is a great opportunity for Trump to get uh, a lot of support from both sides of the aisle. Uh, well, thank, you go, Tom, man. thanks very much for the phone call. Um, there's a problem with this, though, is as how do you define who is psychologically stable to own the gun? You know, the media is pushing the report that a year ago uh, Republicans repealed an Obama regulation that prevented the mental, uh, mentally ill from getting a gun. Do you know how they, they defined mentally ill? Someone who cannot handle their own finances. That was determined to be mentally ill. If you were getting Social Security benefits of any kind and someone was in charge of the money, you were considered mentally ill. The ACLU, the American Association for Disabled Persons, the National Council for Disabilities all opposed it, claiming there was no link. So if you put a a psychology requirement there, you got a problem. The other issue is uh, the Second Amendment why must one have a psych evaluation in order to exercise a constitutional right? Which there is a constitutional right. In in fact, arguably, there is more constitutional right for a long barrel gun than for a handgun. Uh, So you run into those problems. Are there things we could do with guns? Perhaps so. But I got to tell you, my sense in this, in all honesty is that people rush to say we need gun control because they don't want to deal with the more complex issues of a collapsed society. Broken boys who don't have dads, who are from broken homes of one sort or another. And to address that would have to be to acknowledge that for the last 40 years, the American government has pursued policies to, to solve poverty that have not only kept people in poverty, but kept people in poverty dependent on government with broken nuclear households. There has been a sustained sociological um, war by the left in this country, and it really is uh, the, the progressive left in this country for 40 years, has tried to attack the the foundations of the nuclear family. And this is where we are now. We have more households without parents. 
or celebrating single parents. You're not allowed to say anything critical about single parenthood because you know you're you're insulting people. Uh, you can't suggest that a two parent nuclear household is a more stable household. You have to presume that that moms and dads are interchangeable because you can't point out, in fact, that they're not because to do so is homophobic, bigot, racist, whatever you want to say. And we are dealing with the collapse of the two-parent nuclear household in this country. Uh, Kids need a mom and kids need a dad and they're not interchangeable. And when you believe they are and you believe that the role of one parent can be offloaded to the government, they don't need to stay in this together, you get all sorts of problems, including young men who can't handle their emotions and decide to take up arms. That's what happens when society collapses. But no one wants to talk about that. It's a lot easier to say, hey, let's just round up the guns. I mean, y'all, listen, we we could spend all day on, on these stories of the collapse of society, but no one wants to recognize or appreciate them, even though they're there. And that's unfortunate. And everybody wants to rush to guns. Here's the problem. And I hear people call call in. They call in here. They tweet and they say, well, Australia got rid of guns. No one wants to even have the basic acknowledgement that Australia doesn't have a Second Amendment. And here we have a Second Amendment. And because we have a Second Amendment, there are things we have to do here that you don't have to do in Australia. And there are things we cannot do here that you can do in Australia or anywhere else for that matter. I mean, I put up on Twitter earlier something very similar saying that that people want to deal with gun control because they don't want to deal with the issue of the collapse of family and all the boys without dads. And somebody replied, well, here in Peru, we have lots of kids abandoned by their families and we don't have this. Well, Peru is not the United States of America. And uh, liberals say, oh, that's, there you go again. Conservatives always say the United States is, isn't like these other countries, so these things don't apply. Well, they don't. We are not like other countries. All these people salivate over the fact that, hey, we should have a a universal health care system like Great Britain. I'm sorry, but the population difference between the United States and Great Britain, the geographic diversity, the the access to or lack of access to hospitals is different. Uh, On and on and on, the differences pile up until you realize you can't just take their system and apply it here. In the same way, we have parental instability here without the undergirding social structures of churches and whatnot in this country that other places do. Peru is a largely homogenous society that has a strong Catholic um, undergirding of social justice and social society in that country with a government uh, that, that conforms in that direction. We don't in this country because of separation of church and state and everything else. We are a different country. One thing we had until the 1970s and 80s in this country was a appreciation for the two parent nuclear household raising kids. And guess what happened in the seventies and eighties as that went away. The number of mass shooting events in this country involving kids went up while the overall trajectory of mass shootings in this country has gone down in the last hundred years. The number involving kids has actually increased corresponding to the collapse of parents in a household. It's 56 after the hour. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. We've got a lot of people who want to talk about this issue, and I've only got about a minute left. So I just don't believe that there is time to do justice to this issue and with phone calls. So I will turn the next hour over to you guys to talk about this issue. There is other news out there as well we do need to talk about, but... Uh, primarily when we come back, I'll, I'll take your phone calls on the topic. News continues to develop out of Florida. Uh, we know now that unlike prior reports, the guy was not actually a member of any white nationalist or white supremacist group. Um, no ties there. And, you, you know, he is alive, so we can ask him questions. The police are asking him questions. Now, he is pleading guilty, it appears, uh, or at least has admitted his guilt already in this situation, his home life, for those of you who hadn't heard reported, his father apparently is nowhere on the scene. He had, his mother died a few months ago of the flu. Uh, He had an adopted father who also apparently died last year. He himself has had mental health issues for some time and had uh, taken himself out of mental health treatment in the last few months, uh, living with a family, uh, friends, um, 
tragic situation in Florida. Details still developing. We'll take your calls when we come back. It's 10 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News on WSB. And I think I'm going to go on and open the phone lines now and start taking calls. There are a lot of folks who want to call in and discuss the the issue in Florida and the issue of guns and gun control and gun violence and uh, collapsing society, if you will. The phone number, 404-872-0750, one 800 WSB Talk. Uh, let us go first to Oda calling from Alpharetta. Welcome to the program. How are you? Oda? Hello? Hey, Eric. Hi there. Hey, first of all, my heart goes out to all those families and feel really sorry for the tough times they're going through. Um, my question is, like, keeping the uh, politics and debates and Second Amendment, everything aside, why there are no enough security in terms of metal detectors or any such things when you see like in all our airports uh, codes all the other places where we have all these things but why not the school system i mean like you know that is a great question and i don't know the specifics of the school but more and more schools are headed in those directions or are having doors through which it's difficult to enter a, a second level of doors. I know a number of schools where you can open the front door of the school uh, to be seen, but then there's a second uh, security door that someone has to push a button to, to open. Um, I don't know the specifics of the school. Were there, there are, was there armed law enforcement on the campus? Um, I, I know in Florida, teachers cannot conceal carry onto school campuses. I think, again, that's something that needs to be considered. And I suspect what we're also going to see is there's going to be a push now to turn closets and classrooms into secure rooms that are hard to penetrate where teachers can put students in the event of these mass shooting episodes. Certainly, there are things we can do to take precautions uh, given what is happening um, as society continues to descend further and further into chaos. Um, Dutch in Marietta, you're up next. Welcome. Yeah, Eric, I really agree with your uh, discussions about the decline of culture and society, but I also think that there's got to be something done about the photorealistic uh, games that are available 24-7 to the kids that are really not occupied with uh, education or other responsibilities. What do you think about that? Well, you know, this goes to, I, I think, parents matter. And if parents aren't going to police these things, uh, I don't know that society can police them. Uh, and I, I don't think under our current, I mean, if we're going to, to get into it completely, there's a First Amendment issue there that... I mean, if we're going to change the First Amendment for that, then I think liberals will say, well, we can change the Second Amendment while we're at it. Uh, do we want to go down that road? I, I think this is a, another situation, and I realize there's a tragic situation here where this guy's mother and adopted father had both passed away in the last year, but his issues clearly were developing before that. And what was going on? And we also know, by the way, and, and law enforcement is confirm, conform, confirming it this evening that he had been reported several times by individuals and the FBI did no follow up. That should be a big red flag for us. This is uh, one of numerous instances now where an individual has been flagged by the FBI and the FBI has not done something. In fact, I want to read you a really amazing thread here that's on Twitter. My buddy Fred on Twitter, uh, whose handle is Fred on Twitter, uh, says there was an armed guard. He never saw the shooter. Um, you know, ingress and egress inside and outside of schools is one of the big issues that has to be dealt with. Uh, now, I want to read this. This is from uh, C.J. Perry on Twitter. It says, true story. Listen to this, please. If you don't listen to anything else, listen to this. And, and we will take your phone calls. 404-872-0750-1800-WSB-TALK. True story, this guy writes. Several years ago, 
I had a meeting at a prominent Los Angeles building. When entering the parking garage, I was asked to open my trunk for a security search. I popped it from the driver's seat, thinking nothing of it. And then I had a profound, oh, beep, moment. It was a Monday after drill weekend. He's in the National Guard. The contents of my trunk consisted of a combat helmet, body armor, M4 rifle magazines, and several military bags. I knew I was about to do a lot of explaining, and then the guard waved me in, no questions. I was stunned. I had a nearly complete kit for conducting a massacre in plain view, and the security guard wasn't the least bit curious. This is one of the most prominent buildings in Los Angeles, a prime target. I was stunned. Having some time before my meeting, I went to the building security office. I met the guy in charge and explained my concern. He gave me a bureaucratic brush off and promised to retrain the guard. It was obvious I was wasting my breath, so I left to go about my business. Fast forward a week. There's a knock at my door. Two guys in suits. It's a federal anti-terror task force. They wanted to interview me about the incident at the building. The security director had reported me to the LAPD. After a few minutes of chatting, they agreed I had done the right thing and the security director was embarrassed, so they went on their way. Mind you, I live 40 minutes from the building. Which is to say, the FBI did more to track down a guy who reported weak security at a building than a guy who threatened to shoot up a school. Why do we have this problem? I don't know all the reasons, but I think this is one of them. Yes. Yes. We, we we have these situations time and time again, and we find the San Bernardino shooting, the the shooting in um, Florida in Orlando at the nightclub. People had been reported to the FBI. The FBI had looked into it and either dismissed it or didn't follow up. Tragic. Maybe before we go after people's Second Amendment rights, we should go after the, the law enforcement institutions have, who have insisted, if you see something, say something, and we say something and they don't follow up. Maybe, perhaps, just maybe, we should start there. One more call before the break. Mike and Marietta, you're next. Welcome. Hey, hey, Eric. I, I'm sorry I missed uh, a lot of the show here, and I don't know if you uh, right. talked about this, but uh, about the culpability of the media and all this in the first place. I mean, giving these people a big stage uh, for days. Yeah, Mike, I haven't uh, talked about that, but one thing I've done, you will not hear me say the name of the shooter on this program. Yeah, I've, I've heard that before, yeah, and I appreciate that. And Because, you know, what good does it do to tell me about something that happened on the other end of the country even – that I can't do a freaking thing about, you know, it does nobody any good to report all this stuff. And I think the heavy reporting of all this is, is what helps drive this and, and obviously their agenda as well. Yeah. And you know, Mike, there, there was a report out. I I saw, um, Oh, who was it? Frank Luntz, the pollster, uh, put it on Twitter that for 13 days after a mass school shooting, uh, is when you tend to have these copycats, uh, people feeding off the coverage. Wow. Well, you know, and and what gets me is the same people that want to take our guns are the same people that want to let illegals in here, give them cover in sanctuary cities, let them vote for our politicians. It was funny today to a degree, morbidly funny, to watch uh, Senate Democrats railing on Republicans for wanting to restrict DACA citizenship and dragging out this debate when they were saying they needed to get on to gun control. We needed to get to gun control. (sighs) We're not going to get anything done in Congress. I mean, a Congress that where a majority of them agree that a 1.8 million DACA dreamers should have a pass to citizenship, and they don't even want to do that, even though there are a majority agreement on it, uh, good luck trying to get them to get anything done on guns. And I got to say, I would rather them deal with the immigration issue than the gun issue for this reason. Uh, there is a notion in this country that the government has to protect us. And I think it is increasingly clear in the modern age, we've got to protect ourselves. I bet you're familiar with P90X. My producer, Charlie, I used to ridicule him for using P90X. I've got a lot of friends who have used P90X. And truth be told, I actually eventually decided everybody's doing this. I need to get myself back in shape. So I bought it. And then you know what I realized? 
I didn't have a DVD player in the house. I, so I never actually used it, as you can probably tell. Um, and I always thought it was kind of crazy. As, as so many services are moving digital, the parent company, Beachbody, uh, dot com it had a digital presence but it wasn't quite easy to use but now it is they've got a new product i want to tell you about my wife's been using for yoga for a while on our apple tv in fact they have an apple tv app they have an android app they have a an iphone app um really really easy to get all of the beach body products um the p90x insanity 21 day fix the three week yoga retreat all of them streaming on your tv or your phone uh, you can do these things on your own time. You can pick your trainer. Easy to navigate. Again, my wife has been using the yoga one for a while. Uh, really likes it. Uh, and I actually even downloaded it to the Apple TV since I got to start going back to the gym regularly. I may give it a try with you. Who knows? We can have some tag team effort. Right now, though, I want you to go try this. You can get a free trial membership when you text ERIC to 303030, 303030, text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 303030. You're going to get full access to the entire Beachbody On Demand program for free, all the workouts and nutrition information for free. Just text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 303030 today. And we got to go. There's some breaking news right now Another here. Major breaking news uh, development that's unfolding right now involving Special Counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. I want to bring in CNN's Sarah Murray with this exclusive new CNN reporting. Sarah, tell our viewers what you're learning. Well, Wolf, what we have been learning is that former Trump campaign advisor Rick Gates is finalizing a plea deal with special counsel Robert Mueller. He appears poised to cooperate with Mueller's investigation. That's according to sources familiar with the case who have spoken with my colleague Caitlin Polance as well as myself. Now, back in October, Gates pleaded not guilty to financial crimes that were unrelated to the presidential campaign. But for about the past month, Gates has been in plea negotiations with Mueller's team. And he's already been in to speak with Mueller's team about the case. Now, this is someone with a young family. He's a father of four. He is under financial pressure and he was already facing more than 10 years in prison if he were found guilty of existing charges if this case had gone to trial, Wolf. There we go. We got another one pleading, taking a plea, willing to cooperate. The question is, what are they saying? We don't know. We we genuinely have no idea what these guys are saying. Um, and there's no reason to go down the road of speculation. Um, but this is pretty significant news now that we do have a, a series now of people taking pleas uh, with the Mueller team willing to cooperate in their investigation. And they would not be taking pleas and cooperating unless they had information Mueller found useful to then get to other people. So... The Russia, the the special counsel investigation ongoing. Now, uh, we're not going to spend any more time on this issue as we're still dealing with the, the gun issue. And there's a huge issue developing in our state legislature I need to bring you up to speed on. The phone number here, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. There is a huge power grab happening in the state legislature today. A huge power grab. Um, it is uh, Senate Bill 418. It will prohibit local governments in Georgia from barring the sale of products the FDA or USDA hasn't banned. In other words, because the USDA or the, the FDA hasn't banned marijuana, local governments could not say you can't sell them here if the state were to legalize it. Same with alcohol and uh, tobacco and other things. It's a huge power grab by the state legislature preventing local governments from, well, saying you can't sell something in our area. So I think we have a winner for the hot take. You know what the hot take is. It, it is the, the someone offers up a serious take on social media. Um, that is actually an insane idea. Um, we have someone, uh, her Twitter handle, interestingly enough, is 
Dorothy of Israel. Uh, she says her name is uh, Hoodie Rebecca. I have no idea who this person is. She has a lot of followers. Uh, she's apparently Irish, Jewish, American. And she is essentially advocating the killing of children of the mentally ill or the sterilization of the mothers. Because it runs in families, you know. So, yeah, this is the the epitome of the far-left progressive here. Uh, let's kill all the kids before the kids can kill each other. You know, as an aside here, I put this up on the resurgent.com earlier today. One of the reasons we can't have nice things, one of the reasons we can't have a, a civil conversation on these things is because it's always the left media wanting Republicans, conservatives to head their way. Look at the issue of uh, abortion. A majority in this country supports banning uh, partial birth abortion. A majority of this country supports banning abortion after 20 weeks. Well, we can't have that conversation because right now we have to talk about gun control. When can we have that conversation? Never. But we can have the gun control conversation anytime with or without a shooting. And it's always conservatives. Why don't you want to come our direction? The majority of the country supports increased background checks. Conservatives, you should come our way. Well, what about the 20-week abortion? No, 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 we can't talk about that right now. It's not appropriate to talk about it right now. Is it appropriate to talk about the March for Life? No, 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 we, we got the, the Women's March the next day. We got to talk about that. Why should conservatives ever compromise on any of these things? Because compromise is not the left and the right coming together to find consensus. It's always conservatives headed towards the left. Whether it's boys who want to use girls' bathrooms, whether it's it's the, the Christian who wants to, to not have to provide goods and services for a gay wedding, whether it's guns, whatever you want, even abortion, we've all got to go left. We're, the left never comes our way on any of these issues. We can only talk about their issues, we can only talk about them in their way, and we can only use their data no matter how fraudulent the data is. Why should we ever bother to compromise on guns? Because it's not a compromise, it's a cave. The left has designed it so that conservatives can't compromise on gun control. They can only cave. And the moment you say, okay, let's have an extra day. You cannot go into a store and buy a gun that day. You have to wait 24 hours before you can go back and pick up your gun. Let's do that. Well, then you know what the left's going to do? They're going to say, All right, hey, you compromised on this issue. Now you got to compromise on this one. They're, they're never going to compromise on the issue. We're going to find ourselves negotiating against ourselves. That's all we're going to do. So why even bother? Now, let's go to the phones. Michael and Canton, you are up next. Welcome. Hey, thank you, sir. Um, my question is that Senate power grab you're talking about. Would that mean that Cobb County can no longer tell strip clubs they can't serve alcohol at those strip clubs, like when they ran Taj Mahal out of business? No, it would not. Um, you could, Well, yes and no. It, it depends on how you read it. That's part of the problem with the legislation is, no, Cobb County could not ban uh, places from selling alcohol, but Cobb County would still be able to regulate uh, these adult uh, joints. Okay, I was just wondering about that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um if you had to ask me what this legislation, and I don't even know, it's just bizarre that they want to say local governments can't ban things that are regulated by the USDA. So they could ban a strip club because a strip club isn't regulated by the USDA. They could not ban a an adult novelty that is regulated by the FDA. Couldn't do that. Uh, they couldn't ban tobacco sales. Um, all of these sorts of, of things by the USDA and the FDA, this seems like an enormous power grab by the state legislature. I'll tell you my suspicious mind is that, you know, where we're headed as a state, don't you? We're headed towards greater legalization of marijuana. We are. And there are those already out there because of, of legal medical marijuana. There are communities in the state saying, we don't want any part of this. And what this legislation does is says you can't opt out. You, you, you see, look at what happened in Colorado. I'm back. Those sneaky jerks in the state Senate thought they could sever the line. <laughs> Uh, so let me just let me explain this to you. Um, 
is so there's legislation trying to go through the state legislature right now. It was concocted behind closed doors, and now they're trying to rush it through. SB 418, a companion bill from the House, SB or HB 948, and essentially says local governments cannot um, prohibit the sale of anything unless the the FDA and the the USDA bans it if it's a product under their jurisdiction. This relates to tobacco, it relates to alcohol, it relates to <clears throat> medical marijuana, it relates to the legalization of marijuana. I wonder if the guys who were who are backing this legislation have bought themselves some pot farms. Because that is essentially what's going to happen here is if Georgia heads down the medical marijuana road, which it is eventually I mean, don't think George is immune from this. You got the Democrats now campaigning on the issue against the Republicans uh, for governor here. You've got a a growing number of Republicans in the state legislature who want it. And you're not going to be able to have your local government opt out and say, you know, we just don't want to sell this product here. Um, This is a huge power grab by the state. And, you know, I believe that local governments govern the best. So if you're in a situation where you have a a local government that says, hey, our community doesn't want this sold here. That local community should be allowed to do it. And sometimes it works against me. I mean, I'm kind of that way on the transgenderism stuff too. If if Athens, Clark County wants to say, you know, if you're a for-profit business, you you got to let um, people use whatever bathroom they want. Okay, I don't have to go to the bathroom there. I don't think we need a statewide ban. Provided, of course, I think there should be exceptions for uh, faith-based groups and, and organizations, even for-profit organizations that are faith-based or uh, run according to the faith tenets of their their owner. But we got a real problem here when the state says, you know what, local government, you're not allowed to say no to this product. Even though the people in your community don't want it, you're not allowed to say no. I, I think this is a real big issue. I hope the um, Association of County Commissioners and the, the Sheriff's Association in Georgia is paying attention to this issue and sees that it's coming up. It is a huge power grab away from them as well. Um, the sheriffs in the, in the state need to pay attention here because uh, the, I'm sure the senators and representatives have a, a credible explanation, but the language of the legislation uh, doesn't isn't restrictive. So anything related to the FDA, anything related to the USDA, is implicated here. And I would suspect that county commissions, uh, mayors, and sheriffs probably need to get involved in helping kill this legislation in the state. It's a huge power grab away from their jurisdictions. Um, I, I can't understand the reasoning behind it. So pay attention to this. We'll keep you updated. We may have to do an action alert to try to get this thing killed. Uh, very, very, very bad piece of legislation coming out of the state legislature, um, potentially. Now, On other news, you should know that the president's plan on immigration failed in the Senate, uh, couldn't get 40 votes. That's a real problem. That was, there was a bipartisan plan that got many more votes than the president's own plan. It doesn't look like there's going to be a dreamer deal now. And there are operatives in the White House working overtime to try to kill any sort of deal on immigration coming out of the legislature, coming out of Congress. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'm sure be talking more about this tomorrow night, uh, beyond the latest updates on the shooting. I will talk to you guys then.